that this was the year that we would let our oldest son stay up past bedtime to watch the 4th of July fireworks for the first time. Now that we live in El Cerrito, our living room windows provided a beautiful panoramic view of the Bay Area through which we will likely see many fireworks, fireworks shows. Easy. The younger kid is asleep, there's no traffic to sit through, no crowds to navigate, no concerns for the weather, done deal, check. However, the following evening, Jeff raised the question, what do we tell our curious, almost five-year-old, what exactly we celebrate on the 4th of July? And why do we have fireworks? Undoubtedly, he will have many questions right on point. And I'm hoping it will go something like this. Hey, Sebastian, this Thursday is the 4th of July. Each year on the 4th, we celebrate the day our country proclaimed freedom from another country who was leading and governing us with rules that just didn't seem right. What kind of rules? <laughs> there were rules that didn't provide freedom and equality for all people to live the way God intended at creation. Well, how come? It can be hard to see and know and do the right thing when you let love drop by the wayside. When we set rules, sometimes we forget that love is the first rule. There are so many competing interests. Not sure how that conversation will go, but we'll see. But I feel like it'd be so easy to enjoy a day off work in the prime of summer, to gather with friends and family, to wave flags, to dress in red, white, and blue, and to ooh and ah at beautiful fireworks. Doing all that without so much as consider or remember why you live as a free person and who on this day is not granted the same freedoms as you. It could be so easy to decide that my son can enjoy the beauty and color of fireworks and leave it at that. It could be so easy to go about my day and to push the every present, uh, the, the every present inequalities in this country off my radar, out of my sight. But the moment I take the easy road of ignorance, of busyness, of entitlement, of apathy, of suppression, Whatever the excuse, I create a split in the community fabric. When one suffers, we all suffer. The easy road means I'm looking out for myself and closing down my heart. Or as I might say, I'm getting it done. But today's scripture says, when I can't open my heart to those around me, I end up biting and devouring those around me and myself. The verb that Paul uses suggests the actions of wild animals engaged in a struggle to death. When we see others as rivals, as disturbers of the peace, we destroy the fabric that gives life to community. As a parent, taking the easy road might mean survival and sanity in the moment, but it has significant long-term implications on my life, on my children's lives, and the world community. Parenting is an extraordinary challenge and a significant responsibility. Because children aren't born with hate. They learn it. They aren't born with fear of others. They learn it. They learn it from their parents and from the institutions and communities that they hang out in. So this is the time for my five-year-old to see fireworks because this is the age to plant seeds of truth and passion rather than fear and apathy. This is the time to empower the responsibility of freedom rather than grow a sense of entitlement 
for freedom. I was so inspired to read this past week that one of our members hugged and cheered alongside her eight-year-old daughter over the end of Doma and Prop East. Can you imagine the conversations happening in that household? This is a heterosexual family that is talking about the inequality faced by neighbors who are different than they are. And can you imagine how this community of faith is reflecting? Should I be using this instead? Okay, <laughs> will do. <coughs> Hopefully you can hear me better. A little less static for all of us. And so I ask, can you imagine how this community of faith right here is reflecting, sustaining, and instilling that same message of freedom and equality for all that is talked about and practiced in their own home? That is powerful discipleship. That is making a change in future generations. That is teaching responsibility for freedom. That is making the commitment to grow freedom. I need you. I need each and every one of you. In fact, all parents need the faithful community a church can provide to a family. Yes. Once I tell my five-year-old that the first rule is love and that we are called to serve our neighbors, I'm going to be outed. <laughs> my seeming unvaluableness in the eyes of my child will quickly cloud over. Lately, he has asked me why I still use the commuter lane when there's only two of us in the car. What will he say when I'm not serving my neighbor? When I don't exercise the responsibility of freedom in my everyday life? He is the most challenging accountability partner <laughs> I will encounter. Our children aren't changing. They are becoming, and they are becoming like the changes we make. They are becoming like the priorities that we place in our actions. And so I look around this room, and I invite you to do the same. Look who you are here with today. Look at this gathered community. Look at what we have celebrated and stood for year after year, decade after decade. Consider how we have grown and how we have changed and how we are growing and changing still. Look at what we live, speak, and act on in the presence and company of our children. And remember how the Spirit has moved you, filled you, transformed you. Remember how the Spirit has moved us, has filled us has transformed us. On Wednesday morning this past week, a member of our congregation, Margie Groninger, longtime partner with Laura Rodriguez and mother to Mateo and Amaya, wept with joy and said to Pat, in all that has happened, I am most grateful to my church for standing by us, for believing in equal rights for all people, and for holding us in love throughout this long journey. On Sunday, I will be with you in spirit, but my body will be dancing in San Francisco. <laughs> love is most important. Love is first and foremost. Love wins in the face of inequality, hatred, and greed. Love is love is love. And we are praising today God, the creator who delights in our fullness of life. And we are dancing in the streets of San Francisco, joyfully fulfilling newly granted human rights. And so of course I want my children to be here. Of course I want you to be the backup when I mess up. Of course we, we want to be the reason that freedom grows in this city, in this region, in this country, in this world. We have a call and a responsibility to that. And the good news is that Christ has set us free to take a stand. The bad news is declarations and intentions are only the first step in taking a stand. A certificate on paper isn't going to change us. No law is going to change us. We 
have to change us. Legalism is helpless in bringing about freedom. The law can speak it, can write it, can promise it, can nail it to the door, but the law cannot bring freedom about. In the case of the Emancipation Proclamation, it took two years until slaves in Texas knew they were free. And they had an excuse. There was no texting, no emails, no phone calls to be made. What does that tell us? Texting and email and phone calls are still ineffective in bringing freedom about. You can't just check it off your list because you hit the share button on Facebook. You talked about it in church or you wrote a blog post or a news article. Freedom is the work of the Spirit. The Spirit can see what our own two eyes cannot see. Let the Spirit push. Let the Spirit nudge. Let the Spirit break open every detail of your life so that we do not just hold an idea in our heads or a sentiment in our hearts, but that we live out the true spirit of freedom. Freedom is hard work, something our brown and black brothers and sisters taste more poignantly. Already six-plus states are moving forward with voter reform that will increase the already rampant discrimination in our democratic voting process. Already the heartbreaking trial of George Zimmerman exudes deep racism, sexism, and inequality in our so-called justice system. We got work to do, brothers and sisters. Oh, yeah. And this, and this is exactly why Paul was passionate and urgent in this letter to the Galatians. The moment we take a step back, we reburden ourselves and all humanity with something we work so hard to break from and to do differently. The long road to freedom for, for all is not a smooth path. It's more like a roller coaster. <laughs> a roller coaster that backs up. I've been on one of those. Paul pleaded that the Galatians wouldn't return to a single law of the past without first understanding its implications for their future. One of the primary issues the Galatians faced was whether or not new believers, new adults in the community of faith needed to be circumcised as a symbol of their identity in the community. Now, circumcision had been a ritual on the eighth day of life for all children born into the previous faith community. So as the new churches of Galatia were established and the guiding principles of the faith community were shaped, the people wanted to take the easy road to turn to what felt customary and comfortable. And we all know that change is so very difficult. And yet, without change, we cannot embrace freedom. We cannot work towards greater justice. We cannot feel the spirit. Truth of the matter is, Paul didn't really care whether or not a person was circumcised. He simply cared that the Spirit was at work in their lives, rather than the easy, detached state of checking things off a list. In fact, he used the verb stikomen in verse 25, which we interpret to read, since the Spirit leads us, let us also be guided by the Spirit. The verb stokomen has military connotations of standing in formation or marching in line. In other words, since the Spirit leads us, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us keep in step with the Spirit. We need to tune into that other way of seeing, of connecting, of living. We need to feel the Spirit and keep in step with it. Remember why we celebrate the 4th of July and give yourself fully to it. Celebrate how equal marital rights give strength to the human family and ensure all receive it. Know why voter reform creates further disparities and work for a stronger democracy. Give thanks for all those who came before us, stood, stood strong in the storm, spoke their truth, 
faced fear and prejudice and worked and sacrificed to bring huge steps towards justice in our country. Love them, affirm them, celebrate them. Discern how our collective actions either build up life and community or begin a life-terrifying tear in the fabric of our life together. Who has not heard the good news of freedom this week? It is our responsibility to make sure the good news is heard by all the people, experienced and made real in every aspect of daily life. The earth is full of God's unfailing love. Open your hearts to this love and share it generously. Love, my people. Love first, and freedom will grow. Amen.